the U.S. states of Tennessee and New Jersey are the latest to report cases of the new coronavirus in the country. A patient in Tennessee is a 44-year-old man who recently returned home from out-of-state travel. The new deaths raised the total number of affected states in the U.S. to 18. As of Wednesday, there were 150 reported cases of COVID-19 in the U.S. Jeremy Corbyn. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. In the U.K., officials are set to be speeding up preparations for the next stage of dealing with the outbreak. The country has recorded 115 cases, an increase of 30 on Wednesday. France has reported two more deaths linked to the outbreak, bringing the total number of deaths to six. France has also registered 92 new confirmed cases, taking the total number of cases to 377. Even South Africa reported its first case of coronavirus of a 38-year-old man who recently returned to the country from Italy with his wife. Meanwhile, Italy's Lombardy region has reported a rise in death toll from 73 to 98. Overall in the country, 107 people have died from the coronavirus outbreak. The U.S. states of California has declared a state of emergency after confirming its first death from the coronavirus. Officials say the 71-year-old man had underlying health conditions and had been on a cruise ship. Here's Simon Pusey with more in Around the World in Five. Good evening from the Channel Studio in London for your international news around the world in five. California has declared a state of emergency after announcing its first coronavirus death. The Californian governor, Gavin Newsom, made the announcement after a former passenger on board a cruise liner holding 3,500 people died from the virus. The Grand Princess ship is being held off the coast of California. Following the news, the U.S. House of Representatives overwhelmingly approved an $8.3 billion bill to combat the spread of the new virus and develop vaccines for the highly contagious disease, sending it to the Senate for the final passage. Meanwhile, the World Health Organization's Africa director says the continent's ability to tackle coronavirus has improved extremely, but concerns remain over whether overburdened health systems are ready. Angela Ukamadu reports. Africa's ability to tackle coronavirus is improving, the World Health Organization's Africa director has said, amid concerns from health experts that the region is already overburdened with cases of measles, malaria, Ebola, and other infectious diseases. The capacity of countries to address this outbreak has improved extremely in the last uh, few months. While Rebecca Moetti said previous medical emergencies like the Ebola outbreak had prepared the continent. And so point of entry, screening, for example, surveillance, laboratory capacity, and therefore we were able to build on this. She was speaking as Senegal confirmed its first case of the virus, the second in sub-Saharan Africa after an Italian man tested positive in Nigeria last week. On Monday, Nigeria's Minister of Health, Osagi Ehanire, updated the country on preparations. There's a brand new emergency unit, state of the art, that is under construction, has been under construction in Guagualada, which was not yet completed, but they're working at every space, and it should be completed by next month, April. Countries have introduced screening measures at airports, and Kenya, Tanzania, and Rwanda have suspended flights to China. Medical workers have also been preparing isolation units, but some fear they do not have the capacity to deal with the large-scale outbreak. Dr. Mekelu is in charge of the disaster committee at Cameroon's Douala State Hospital. Indeed, at the moment, we're very limited because we can't take care of more than three sick people. So there needs to be a center with a large capacity. He says they also need better equipment and for a significant quantity of staff to be trained. As of Tuesday, coronavirus had spread to over 60 countries, including North African nations Algeria, Tunisia and Egypt. According to Reuters tally, more than 89,000 people have been infected and the global death toll exceeds 3,000. 
Hundreds of migrants continued their way to Turkish-Greek border on Thursday by huddling in tents and makeshift camps on the Turkish side of the border. Thousands of migrants have made for Greece since Ankara said that it would let migrants cross its borders into Europe, reneging on a commitment to hold them in its territory under a 2016 deal with the EU. Ankara has accused Greek forces of shooting dead four migrants, a charge rejected by Athens, which says Turkish forces are helping the migrants to cross the border. Meanwhile, a fight broke out in the Turkish parliament after an MP criticised President Erdogan over the country's military intervention in Syria. An opposition lawmaker accused the president of disrespecting soldiers. He also said it was irresponsible to send troops into war without air support. President Erdogan has been equally scathing of the opposition, accusing them of treachery. And finally, Egypt has reopened the stepped pyramid of Djoser in Saqqara after an intermittent restoration process for nearly 14 years at a cost of over £100 million. The pyramid was built between 2667 and 2648 BC from the Third Dynasty. Today it is about 60 metres high and consists of six terraces built in stages. The pyramid had not undergone extensive restoration before, but in 2003 the risks surrounding it increased. The restoration process started at the end of 2006, but it had slowed down since 2011 after the popular uprising that toppled the rule of the late President Hosni Mubarak. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the Channel Studios in Nigeria. Thanks, Simon. Here's Alumide Macaulay with Sports News. Thank you, Amarachi. Hello and welcome to Sports News. Nigeria has been added to the list of countries at the highest doping risk by the Athletics Integrity Unit, AIU, less than five months to the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. Countries worldwide are classified by the AIU in three categories, A, B, and C, according to the level of doping risk to the sport, with category A having the highest doping risk risk to the sport, and Category C, the lowest. The vision to evolve into a global brand is the focus of the Nigeria Women's Football League ahead of the new season. That's according to the head of the league body, Aisha Faladeh, at the unveiling of a new logo in Lagos. It represents the three tiers of the league, which will now be known as NWFL Premiership, NWFL Championship, and NWFL Nationwide. Paraguayan authorities have confirmed that former Brazilian football star Ronaldinho and his brother have been questioned after allegedly using fake passports to enter the South American country. Paraguayan police raided the hotel in Asuncion, where the 2005 Ballon d'Or winner was staying during a trip to promote a book and found the false documents. That's it on Sports News. Back to Amarachi for the close of the news at 10. And the main news again, the Federal High Court in Kano today halted the suspension of the All Progressives Congress National Chairman, Mr. Adam Soshomale, as a member of the party in Edo State. As Mr. Oshomale said, the Abuja Court acted without considering the facts. That's the news of 10 tonight. Thanks for watching. I am Amarachi Ubani. Good night.